as if understanding the relationship between growth hormone releasing peptides and our endocrinology isn't complex enough, let's take a closer look at the relationship between BPC-157 and our neurotransmitters, the intricate interplay between the compounds in our brain that affect how we feel and what we do. If my math is correct, we've done 15 videos on BPC-157, multiple of which have dissected the research from its involvement in wound healing as well as foreseeable risks, but today we're going to take a look at something different. So if you do want to get into this research, this data, just check my page, type in BPC-157, and go from there. Let's start with some background, which due to the multiplex nature of neurophysiology will be incredibly simplified, and I can't highlight this enough. Among the multitude of hormones that circulate within our body and interact with different organ systems lie these neurotransmitters, which are essentially compounds secreted by neurons, or cells in the central nervous system, that interact not only within the brain, but also within different components of our physiology. For instance, we've got serotonin, which is implicated in mood, dopamine, known for its role in pleasure-seeking behavior, amongst many other things, glutamate, an excitatory neurochemical involved in memory, GABA, the inhibitory neurotransmitter that's notable for the calming effects of alcohol, and epinephrine or norepinephrine, i.e. adrenaline, noradrenaline, that are more adrenergic, or signal these fight-or-flight responses, and we'll give special shout-outs as well to acetylcholine, which is implicated in learning and memory, as well as endorphins, which are hyperbolically known as those feel-good molecules. And to save time and boredom, I won't get into the intricate details of each study, which predominantly involves rodent research, that we are going to be referencing. However, will upon request, as I always try my best to do in the comments section, which has been a lot of fun lately given the uptick in viewers and growing interest in peptides. Which leads me to my next request, or my only request. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe if you like this type of peptide-related content. Seriously, you guys have made making these videos, which initially got like 10 views each, so worth it. But since this is a gastric peptide, I digest. <laughs> uh, I really hate myself sometimes. Let's get back into it. First off, let's start by saying that although likely related to its role in inflammation and healing, BPC-157 has shown that it may help with pain relief, although that is a topic to be further investigated. And interestingly, at the same time, it's shown to counteract the pain-relieving effects of morphine, which makes this topic even more complex and, quite honestly, confusing. Now let's move on to dopamine. Everyone's heard of dopamine mostly in the context of pleasure-seeking behavior, the reward system, which is typically popularly discussed in the setting of addiction. However, this neurotransmitter is implicated in many other conditions, from apathy to psychosis to neurocognitive disorders. There are multiple neurologic pathways that act to balance the presence of dopamine, and there's a lot we don't know about its intricacies. L let's just say creating a highway for instance, that balances a huge amount of traffic and congestion is very tough. Understanding this system is a million times more difficult. And although BPC-157's role has not been strictly evaluated in the context of dopamine balance, it has been noted that when administered with an antipsychotic like haloperidol and amphetamine in rodents, which would typically predispose them to deleterious behavioral responses, these were lessened with co-administration of BPC, highlighting that there is likely interplay play with dopamine. Moreover, in rodent models with Parkinson's disease, BPC-157 helped to counteract some symptoms, which further highlights its possible role in modulation of dopamine given the fact that Parkinsonian symptoms are characterized by dopamine depletion in part of the brain called the nigrostriatal area. Similarly in rats, BPC administration has also shown to influence serotonin synthesis in some parts of the brain, albeit we don't know how. It's additionally shown to counteract effects of serotonin syndrome, which is a very dangerous condition that affects hemodynamic stability and the central nervous system and is oftentimes caused by individuals taking too many compounds that increase serotonin. Thus, due to the visible interaction with serotonin modulation, it is theorized that BPC-157 could possess antidepressant qualities, although of course this has not been confirmed. It's also exhibited an ability to counteract effects of benzodiazepines in alcohol, thus implicating a possible role in gas modulation as well. But once again, this is ever complex to determine given not only the interplay between neurohormones themselves, but also to be frank, how little we know about them. And interestingly, one study exhibited a possible anxiety-reducing effect of BPC-157. When compared to the rodent colleagues who received diazepam or Valium, the ones who received BPC had better management of shock and stress. These rats were essentially shown a crazy bright light, and the ones who 
received BPC-157 were more likely to cross into a darker area after exposure than the ones who received diazepam or Valium. And we'll make sure to take a closer look at the relationship between BPC-157 and brain injury itself in a different video, but it's important to note that there does exist this idea revolving around the brain-gut axis and how we feel. So possibly as a gastric pentadeca peptide, BPC-157's role in modulating gut health itself could possibly be implicative in why some people who take it report improvement in mood. And although in its infancy with regards to research, its possible modulation of dopamine and serotonin, possibly even GABA, could highlight that, heck, it's worth considering more research on BPC-157 to truly evaluate its role in mental health. That said, I tried to keep this as short and comprehensive as I could. Like I said, check out this channel for more videos on BPC-157 with regards to more popular health-related topics like gastrointestinal health, wound healing, musculoskeletal injury, and we'll make sure to dive into central nervous injury in a later video because honestly I find this peptide, like many other people, quite freaking interesting. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, that subscribe button, and we'll talk soon.